Whenever I get asked to pick one person from history I'd have dinner with, easy, my one-year-old self. Over some Malcolm X SpaghettiOs, I'd tell little Brad to keep doing that do, rocking that flow, those locks of lush. When people reject that answer, I throw a tantrum and tell them my next choice, Alice Paul. Welcome to Naughty Politics, I'm your host, Brad Lee. Alice Paul is possibly the unsungiest of all unsung heroes in U.S. politics, which is shocking considering her crowning achievement is women's suffrage, the passage of the 19th Amendment, which in 1920 gave women the right to vote. A big reason for Alice's success is that she doesn't buy into how a lady is supposed to act, Aaron. She refuses to play nice, bringing an edge to protest that has never been seen before. Her critics truly feel that she's nasty, Trent. Right you are, Aaron. You have really sexy feet, Trent. Back in the early 19-teens, the National American Woman Suffrage Association, NASA, was taking a state-by-state -state approach to women's suffrage. And then in comes Alice Paul, like a teenager wrestling the remote control away from her brother. Because you don't know how to use it! Now Alice can't be given all the credit for suffrage. There were thousands of women working for it, many before Alice was born. But she had this idea, to shift the fight to the national level and pass an amendment to the U.S. Constitution so all women, not just ones in states where it was legal, would have the right to vote. Fine, tell mom! Oh my god, I hate you so much! NASA endorsed Democratic leaders like then-President Woodrow Wilson because Democrats were sympathetic allies to suffragists. Alice and her best friend Lucy Burns broke rank and created the National Woman's Party, which turned on Democrats and held them just as responsible as Republicans for women not having the vote. The NWP wanted more than just sympathies from Democrats. They wanted action. They deployed Silent Sentinels, which sounds like a sick first-person shooter game in a library, but instead of running around and shooting villains that pop out of books, you stand in one spot and shush them. Carl, I mean, that's like, that would, that would kill with librarians. That's a billion-dollar idea. Anyway, the Silent Sentinels stood in front of the White House holding banners with inflammatory messages. They didn't make waves at first, but then in 1917, and here's where it gets interesting, the U.S. entered World War I. Protesting a wartime president had never been done. Unequivocal support and loyalty to the president and country were expected of citizens during war. Alice and the NWP ignored the norm and continued protesting, taking it to the next level. The Silent Sentinels called the president Kaiser Wilson and accused him of caring more about the plight of Europeans than American women. And shit went down. Angry mobs physically attacked Alice and the Sentinels, and the women were eventually charged with obstructing traffic. They refused to pay the fines and went to prison where they demanded to be treated as political prisoners. Alice led hunger strikes, for which they were beaten and thrown into frigid, rat-infested cells. More and more arrests were made, probably because free women got jealous. They have rats in there? Sign me up. The hunger strikes continued, guards started jamming feeding tubes down the prisoners' throats, and prison officials tried, unsuccessfully, to get Alice declared criminally insane. Eventually, word got out about what the women were going through. The men got jealous. Dude, those are our rats. And Alice and company were released. In reaction to the uproar over how they were treated, Wilson reversed his position in 1918 and threw his support behind the amendment, calling it a war measure. It was passed in the House and Senate, and then it was on to the states. Three-fourths of them are needed for ratification of amendments, and it all came down to this. We're past the halfway mark of 1920, Trent. The 18th of August, Aaron. At 24 years old, Harry Byrne is the youngest state representative of Tennessee, Trent. Aaron, all signs point toward Harry, a Republican, casting his vote against suffrage. It's almost time, Trent. He's extending his arm, Aaron. Oh, what's this? He's been handed a piece of paper. Peter, can you see what's on the paper? I can't, but I've confirmed it's a telegram, Trent. He's reading it, and Aaron, it seems to be vexing him. Oh my god, what is he doing? His thumb is up. He just voted for suffrage. I can't believe it. The 19th Amendment, Aaron. We just witnessed history. I want your feet in my mouth. That telegram was from Harry Burns' mother, asking him to vote yes, to give women the right to vote. And I'm, and I'm crying. <laughs> Why am I crying? It's... Just women getting the right to vote, it's not a Chevy truck commercial. Shut up, Carl. Quite an achievement, Aaron. 
But though the 19th Amendment gives all women the right to vote, it doesn't mean that all women are able to. So true, Trent. Stay tuned. In 45 years, the 1965 Voting Rights Act will outlaw racist measures preventing African American women and men from voting. And Aaron, non-English speaking Americans will have to wait another 10 years for bilingual ballots. How many people, Peter, believe that all women are able to vote now that suffrage has passed? Trent and Aaron, a lot. The majority of suffragists, Aaron, advocated for white women only. In fact, Trent, the exclusion of African American women led to greater support for suffrage. Even Susan B. Anthony promoted suffrage on the basis that educated white women were better suited to vote than illiterate black males. And Aaron, Alice is towing that racist line. Did you say toe? Aaron! Alice is far from perfect. She'll eventually decline requests from African American women asking for her help saying their issue is race, not gender. Wow, that's really shitty, Trent. I 100% agree, Aaron, although I don't think you can say that word on the air. For Pete's sake, the FCC doesn't even exist, and neither does TV, Trent! Fuck! But getting back to your point, Alice really dropped the ball on intersectionality. Absolutely, Aaron. But she still deserves credit for her contributions to progress for women. Just listen to that crowd. Jubilant, Trent. And now they're chanting. I'm not hearing anything, Aaron. Feet! 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 You are feet, insane. Feet! Feet! Other notable Alice Paul achievements. She created the World Women's Party in 1938, which got gender equality into the United Nations Charter and created the UN Commission on the Status of Women. She led a coalition that successfully added a sexual discrimination clause to Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And she co-wrote the Equal Rights Amendment, working on it from 1923 until her death in 77. Once ratified, it'll establish that rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. That's still not a thing. 2019 and there's still no amendment protecting people from sex-based discrimination. But we're one state away from ratification. One state. That's going to be monumental. I cannot wait. Thank you for watching another episode of Naughty Politics with me, Bradley. If you enjoyed it, please help me out by clicking like and sharing it with others. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page. Oh, and in the comments below, leave me the name of your hero. Who do you think should be on my wall? Maybe I'll do a future episode on them.